Hey everyone, Yuri here and in this video I will show you how you can extend the functionality of the default documentation editor so you can introduce new behaviors, new blocks and new types that you can work with. Now if you haven't seen the previous video where we talk about custom exporters and just templates in general, I would strongly suggest you do that so you have context for this video. And now without further ado, let's introduce some of the custom functionality into this documentation. So in the last video, I've talked about exporters. Exporters are packages and they basically contain the templates that power the documentation. So you can truly customize your documentation experience. However, what I didn't mention is that the templates, the exporters are not just there for styling information. They are there also for the functionality. So you can actually introduce a new functionality into Supernova that will extend what is possible beyond the basics like editing, like using tokens, components, assets and so on. There is quite a lot of default functionality, don't get me wrong, but in many cases you want to introduce something of your own, something that is specific to your design system. And this is exactly what Supernova allows you to do. So what I will do, first I'll go to settings and as you have seen in the previous video, I have selected a non-default exporter, something that I have created that extends the functionality beyond what is possible by default. Now, as you can see, I also have the default one, but we have selected the new template. Now, as I said, the templates not only provide the design, but also the functionality. So what I would like to do is to replicate a specific functionality that I found in this design system called Seeds uh, from the Sprout Social. I would like to show this healthy badge in my components. And this is not a functionality that you can get uh, by default inside Supernova, but it is functionality that you can create yourself. So it would be specific to your needs. This health indicator is usually very specific because you have to take the health from some specific place and they are probably downloading it from you know some database or maybe some uh, Google spreadsheet. We actually want to do the same. So how would I proceed with creating a custom component? Well, the first thing that I would need to do is to similarly how I've done in the last video, go to VS Code and then modify the base documentation template. The template has a special cate category which allows you to contribute a new functionality into the editor. And here you can see that it's defined as a JSON actually. I've created one component that is called dynamic health and it will be presented as a new block. This dynamic health has one property, which is component ID, and it will be presented as component ID in human readable form to everyone who is using your editor. Now I've already published all of this and also created a rendering mode or you know, the template that uh, gets presented on a front end when this block is used. So we can actually try how this works inside the editor. So as you can see, it's called dynamic health. So let's just switch back to the editor. And what I would like to do is to show this, uh, this custom component, uh, this custom block that I've created inside this documentation, inside my own documentation. So what I will do, I will just type dynamic health. And indeed, as you can see, exactly based on the definition, it shows a new custom block that is specific to this template that I have created. Now I can use this dynamic health and it creates the UI for it. And indeed it asks you for one specific ID. Uh, in this case, the ID of the component that I want to render. Now I made this block and there is JavaScript logic that powers it so that if you provide a component ID, it asks a very specific list and I can show you the list. So uh, in here, component health, it, it asks this specific list, the specific spreadsheet uh, for the information about the component. So in here I have a component called button with ID of a button. And I've also added that the component is withering. It was published. I've added some extra information simply so I can render the same thing here. I've made a template for it. So it replicates this functionality. And I also made it. So if you click on it, it would show the same pop-up that they do uh, with all the information that is there inside the table that I was showing you before. So going back to the editor, I will just write the button and now basically the, the 
exporter or the export pipeline that we have will provide the data into your custom component, into your custom block, and will render a front-end code depending on how you have defined the front-end code yourself. So you are fully in charge of how it gets presented inside the, the, the editor. So you can ask the users for additional information such as component ID. You are also in charge of how it gets how it gets rendered and you are also in charge of where it gets used. So you can fully customize this component uh, and basically introduce any kind of functionality into your documentation as long as you can code it yourself. Now I will publish this documentation and we will see what happens. So ideally uh, it will show inside my documentation, inside this button documentation, a component that is completely same uh, as what they have here. So now that the documentation has published, I can actually go to see whether we have rendered the component correctly. And if you have done everything, you have provided the template, you've configured this properly, it will show up exactly as it should in this seeds design system. So going into our documentation, you will see that uh, we indeed have the status of the component uh, withering, which is exactly what we have said inside this component health sheet. Now, what is also important to note is that those components get rebuilt every time you publish. So what I can do is actually go back to this component health sheet and maybe change it so this component is healthy. You know, I've improved uh, the component. I've maybe updated it uh, on November. So let's just change some of the information about this component and now as you will see, it still says withering, but if we republish the documentation, it will actually take the sources anew and it will re-render this component with the new information. So once this documentation has been published, I can just go to the documentation, refresh the page, and indeed the component is healthy. And if I click on this, you will see that it was last modified in November of 2021, which is exactly what we have said in this spreadsheet. Now what I'm showing you is just an example of how one such component can be created. But the fact is, is that because you have access to all the logic of the exporter or an, of the documentation, and also of all the templates, you can introduce any kind of functionality that you want to into the menus, into the top menus or into the content. That's completely up to you. So I'm actually really looking forward to see what you can create with this. I hope that you liked this video and I will see you in the next one.